Okay, so welcome back to my channel. This is going to be a recap of the new Netflix um, series, The Protector. This is season one, episode one. Um, they don't have titles. They're just episode one through however many episodes there are. So, the first episode, uh, and I have to say, this is, like, if, like I said in my uh, description of my channel, I, I try to review uh, local, uh, well... U.S. shows as well as international shows, and this is definitely an international show. It's in Turkish, so it's subtitled, so this is going to be my first time trying to review a show that has subtitles, so bear with me. So, um, it opens with this guy, he's standing there, he's shirtless, a gun is fired, and a bullet is coming straight, straight, uh, directly at him. Okay, so I was like, okay, what's, what's going on here? So, then we, um... In a flash to what seems to be present day, okay, and we uh, are introduced to his name is Hakan, I think that's how they pronounce it, and he's just you know a, a young guy looks like to be in his mid thirties, and he's just looking for something more out of life. Um, he, him and his friend Mimo, wants to open a club, but. Um, obviously, to run a business, open a business takes money, which they do not have. And so, their thing now, especially him, is trying to figure out how they're going to get this money so they can open this club, so they can, you know, they want to make something of themselves, okay? So, you know, they're up getting their day started. You know, they're walking through town, uh, their, their little, uh, their city, and apparently he knows a lot of people. So, you know, it's like one of those scenes where he's just walking, you know, until his, you know, he gets to, he's walking to work. And so on his way, he's running into a lot of people that he know, and it's like a whole lot of, hey, how you doing? What's up? How you doing, man? Da, da, da. And, and, you know, that whole thing. So he gets to work, and he works in the antique shop with his father. And so he starts talking to his father about, basically, his dreams, how he wants to open his, um, his own club, and, you know, how he... You know, he doesn't want to work in an antique shop. He just, he doesn't like what he's doing and he wants to do more and he feels like he's capable of doing more. And his father was basically like, you know, um, basically just because something is new doesn't mean that it's good. You know, look at this, uh, the bazaar. It's been here for 600 years and he's basically, I mean, I don't want to say he was kind of shitting on his dream a little bit, but he's basically like, why do you want to do... This one, well, you know, basically, this is, you know, this is the family business. This is supposed to be about us. It's about, you know, the whole thing. And he just, he just don't want to hear that. He just, he wants to do something else with his life. And so his father tells him, okay, you have a delivery. So he's delivering this uh, throw rug to a woman in this high-rise building. And, um, so while he's on his way there, they flash to the guy I first for for Sal or Dean. He's like this mogul, like everybody knows his name, and it's actually one of his buildings that he's going to to deliver this um this throw rug. And so he goes to deliver to this woman who's um I can't really tell um if she was American or what she was there in business, whatever the case may be. But he delivers the rug to her. I don't know. Um, and I don't know, I don't, that whole thing, okay, so, shit, let me start over. Okay, so welcome back to my channel. Uh, this is going to be a recap of The Protector Season 1, Episode 1. Um, this is a new Netflix series. It is an international show, so it's in Turkish, it's subtitled. So this is going to be quite challenging, okay? So, it opens with this guy, he's shirtless, he looks scared, and you see this the gun being fired and his bullet is heading straight towards him. So you're like, okay, what the hell is going on here? So we flash to Hakan. I think that's how you pronounce his name. And he's just waking up to get his day started. And his friend, he shares an apartment with his friend Mimo. And their goal, their dream is to have their own club. Um, so, you know, they're out. They're, you know, walking to, um, to, on their way to work. They don't work together. He's, he works with his father in an antique shop. So, but you can see on the way, you know, he's running into a lot of people that he knows. You know, th that whole scene where, you know, have the music is playing and he's walking through town and he's talking, you know, hey, what's up? And how you doing? It's been a long time. How you doing? Da -da -da, you know, that whole thing. And so he finally gets to work. And just before he walks into the shop, there's a woman there who claims to be a fortune teller. And she basically tells him that his life is going to change and basically that he's destined for something better. So he just kind of brushed her off like, okay, girl, okay, whatever. Anywho, so he walks into the shop. 
And he starts talking to his dad about, you know, his dreams. Like, I want to, I don't want to do this. I don't want to work in an antique shop. I want to have my own club. I, you know, I feel like I'm capable of doing more and I want to achieve more and do more with my life. That was basically just the conversation. The father was basically like, you know what? I don't want to say that he kind of sh he shit on him, but he was like, you know, this is just more than antique shopping. This is about family and us connecting and da da da. And, you know, it's been here for 600 years, so there's all this history and. You know, he's basically like, why would you want to, you know, want to leave all this to do something new? And he starts talking about a, a cousin of theirs that tried to open the restaurant and ended up closing it down. He ended up going bankrupt and the whole thing. And so he's also talking to him about the pairs of, being, of opening a business. Like, it's not as easy as all that. So then he tells him that he has a uh, delivery. So he's going to deliver this uh, kind of this throw rug. So around this time, this guy, he's getting out of a chopper on top of one of these buildings. And I think his name is, how they pronounce it, Forsell or Dean. He's like the top guy. Like, he's a billionaire. Um, and he he's arriving. His uh, secretary, I guess you want to call her, general manager, Layla. She's uh, meeting him on the tarmac and basically just kind of giving an update about what they refer to as the uh, tender. Um, it's some kind of project, I think, that he... Uh, is bidding on that he wants and um he's actually being prepared for a press conference to talk about it so while he's down talking about the press conference um a guy um, after the press conference he starts he walks away and starts talking to his what looks like his right hand man called M mazar and as he was talking to him, the the guy, his, I guess, rival, a, a person that was also bidding on this project, walks up, and I think his name is Gokhan, and basically, you know, they, you know, sh you know, exchange some words, and basically, good luck, and may the best man win the whole thing, so he walks off, but while he's, he walks away, but Mazar's kind of standing there looking at him, giving him the side eye, like, okay, hmm. So, around this time, Hakana, he's arrived with the rug. And the woman walks to come to the door in t-shirt and drawers. And I guess she was looking for a tip for him for delivering it. So she left him at the door and she's walking around digging in some trying to find a per find whatever. And so he gets the rug and she starts saying that oh she's only there for time and then she has to go to someplace else and you know she's there to t to kind of taste what you know this what uh Istanbul has to offer and the whole thing. And so that's you know he ends up screwing this woman. Okay, whatever, you know, you're I guess on business or so you're out of, out of town, you know, and you're doing your thing. Okay, that's all good, whatever. Anywho. So as he was leaving, he sees this, this long line. So he asked the guy what's going on. And he said, oh, it's, it's a job interview. So all these people are here to interview for this position. <coughs> and so the guy tells him, oh, you can go and get an application from so-and-so, whatever. So, you know, he goes through the process and then he's able to get in that day for an interview. And so he's sitting down and basically Layla is um, interviewing, the inter interviewing the people. And she basically takes one look at him and basically... She decides that he just he doesn't have what it takes to um, fulfill whatever this position is, and um, basically she's saying he doesn't um, he needs somebody uh, with a certain they're looking for somebody very specific with a certain background that uh, that is bilingual or you know speaks of various languages and and he's you know he's rough around the edges. I mean he's dressed like a delivery guy when he goes into this interview. He's wearing jeans and a leather jacket and t-shirt and he's not you know. So she kind of takes one look at him and she just makes up her mind that mm, no mm -mm. you know I'm Mr. Erdine's general uh, manager or something like that and you know it's you know her job to you know get the right people for these positions and he basically like oh you're one of those and she got offended like what does that mean he's like, oh you're from a rich family and you were able to go to private school and you know due, due to your dad's connections you made it here and he wasn't nasty about it he was just basically telling her you know like okay so it's you know it must be good to be must be nice to be you <laughs> um he so so he's like yeah you so you're one of the lucky ones and um, she said, uh, so she says to him, well, well, well let's, let's talk about you. Uh, were you spoiled as a kid by your parents? And, da, da, da. and he was like, basically, he's basically, uh, both my parents are dead. Uh, they died when I was a kid. And so she kind of, kind of pulled back like, bitch. Anywho. Um, uh, and he, he basically was like, it's his dream to open a club and, you know, da, 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 da. Just basically his dream to she, he, she was basically like, well, we can't help you here. Um, 
wish you the best but I can't not, do nothing for you and so you know they talked just kind of exchanged words a little bit and he left and so as he was leaving he could see from the elevator that the, um, there were people working in the lobby they were hanging some chandelier and this little, and he could see that uh, it, it looked unsteady so once he gets, got off the elevator he, it, the, it, the chandelier ends up falling as he so, sees this little girl running to get her ball it's some kind of toy that she dropped and she's running after to get it and so he got there in the nick of time to pull her out of the way <coughs> before this thing fell on her and so what you saw was that uh, Faisal, Erdin, and, and, and Mazar, his guy, they saw this happen. So they kind of looked and looked on and was like, oh, okay, and they walked on. So um, he gets back to the store and he's still talking to his dad about, you know, his dreams. And around this time, a woman walks in and she's looking for the, a specific shirt. And so the father's looking at the... Uh, at the um, photo she has. And he was like, oh, we can't help you here. But her kind of like, wait, man, I think we have something like that in the basement. And he's like, no, we can't help you. We don't have it. We don't have anything like that. And so he's really like, I think I saw something. He's like, no, sorry. Um, I will ask around. And so she left her car. And uh, he, uh, her kind of saw her out, walked her out. And basically came back and was like, well, what, he was, what was that? He was like, just go get me some coffee. The boss said, just go get me some coffee. So as I kind of left the shop, he made a call and basically like, I think, you know, it's, t um, it's time or whatever he said. It's like, okay, so what Pops into? What he got, what he involved in? So, um, um, Mimo, so he gets back to the shop with the dad's coffee and then next thing you know, Mimo shows in with, with a bunch of damn bags. And so her kind of was looking at him like, what, what's, what's up? And he basically had to tell him that he took the money um, he was told that it was a sure thing. He took the damn rent money and gambled it and lost it. So the person, the landlord, threw them out. So Hakan is pissed. He's like, I left the money. What are you talking about? I can't believe you spent all the rent money. This is bullshit. And of course, the father in the background saying, I see, told you y'all, like, y'all grew up, but, you, but you're still children and <laughs> just irresponsible. And that. So he's catching it from both sides. You got. Uh, Memo apologized like I didn't know and said it was a short thing and I'm sorry and he's cussing Memo out and the dad's in the background like I just y'all yeah, just a bunch of kids da, 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 da. and he was just he was just too through and he said something to his father and his father said I need to, you need to remember who you're talking to uh, you need to remember that you're talking to your father and Hakan turns to him and said you're not my father and he walks out so I'm like okay no okay so let me flash back a little bit because they kept saying to, to the dad to his father, well, you never helped us, or basically said that he never tried to help them, or or what they was basically turning on him, trying to blame him for not, I guess I don't know, investing in this venture. I, I don't know. Like if you just looking at them, they don't like they can run shit anyway. So it's like, would I have thrown my money to that? Probably not. If I was pop, he's like, I ain't putting my money in that shit. Y'all crazy. But so he walks out. And, um, so you see Mazar and Gokhan, they're in a car now. And he's meeting with, uh, Gokhan is meeting with Mazar. And so basically Gokhan is wants Mazar to get Erdine to withdraw from, withdraw his bid for this project. And so what Gokhan got was... A nice little choker. So as they were getting out of the car, he was getting out of the car so they could talk. Majan pulled out a garage, I guess that's what you call it, and choked the shit out of him, killed him. So he, we, so uh, Gokhan is no more. Okay. So um, Hakan is that he's gone to a bar. He's like, I guess he figured with all the shit that's going on today, I need a drink. So Mimo shows up. And he's like apologizing profusely, uh, basically, um, just, you know, he thought it was a short thing and how sorry he was. Initially, I kind of didn't want to do She's like, you know, fuck you. I'm t just, I, just get away from me. I don't want to talk to you. I don't even want to see you right now. Da, da, da. So they talked and talked and talked. And after a certain, after a while, you know, they started laughing and it was a whole big thing. And then... <coughs> I kind of realized he still had the lady's uh, business card in his pocket. And so, what do you think they do? They go back, they go to the shop to steal this shirt. So now they've called and made a meeting to set up a meeting with this woman to sell this shirt. They're sitting in like, it looks like a food court. 
and they're talking about you know money and he's like well why is this shirt so valuable because him it looks it looks like a shirt and he was like uh she talking about she was saying my the person who wants it is willing to offer seven figures and so around this time dad shows up and basically asks him what the hell are you doing and da, 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 da. he ends up and so they get into a little argument and they see you know gunman shows up and shoot the place up um the father ends up getting hit um the woman also gets hit i believe um and uh he gets his father in the car and he thinks he's taking him to the hospital the father's like no take me to this farm this particular pharmacy and he's like he's freaking out because it's blood everywhere and he's like i'm not taking you to the pharmacy to the hospital he's like no take me to this pharmacy so they get to this so they get to the pharmacy and <clears throat> and the people automatically knew what to do so it was a woman i was a lady at the, at the front desk and <clears throat> i think her father was a pharmacist and so they get in and she, you know, closed the place, locked the place down. The father took, um, her father took his father in the back. And he was starting to freak out, like, what is this place and where is he? So, because he went in the back and there was nothing there. It was like he walked to a bathroom. So it was like, where the hell is my father? Where did he take him? And, da, 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 da. and so she ends up putting the choke, putting him in some kind of chokehold until he passed out. Because he was freaking out. She's like, I don't want to have to fuck you up. So let me go on and you take, you, you go night, night for a little while, just for a few minutes. <laughs> so we can get the situation under control so he comes to and she tries to explain to him you know try to explain as much as she could and so she ends up taking him in the back he takes him she takes him in well he's like it's just the bathroom but there's this uh towel that you push and it the wall rotates so it's a hidden room in in, in behind the bathroom so they go he goes in and he sees his father and you know the pharmacist working on him and you know he's still alive and He's talking to him like, you know, I should have told you this a long time ago. Da, 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 da. And, um, initially, you know, he had lost a lot of blood. He was an older, I mean, he was an older man, so he didn't make it. So, of course, he started to freak out. And, um, they, he wanted to go to the police and do the whole thing. They're basically trying to explain to him, no, 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 this is what this is. Now they're stuck with the task of having to explain to him whatever all this is. And so what the shirt means and everything. And they basically, he's like, I don't give a fuck about that shirt. I don't, no, I'm not doing it. So they basically gave him the shirt. He's like, go put it on and you'll see. And so he puts the shirt on. And it just looks like some little, almost look like some like uh, fatigue kind of shirt. Well, sleeveless uh, shirt, like it just didn't look like anything special. But then, after a few minutes, it started. Something started to happen, and it actually absorbed into his skin. And so he's standing there like, "What? What? What the hell was that?" And then, as you know, she fires the shot. So it was him in the beginning, and it was her. She actually fired the shot to show him that he was invincible. So she shoots him. It knocks him out for a whole minute. Just <laughs> been the head. She shooting right between the eyes. And. Uh, he comes to, and they're now just kind of standing there looking at him like, like, <laughs> now do you get it? So they're now tasked with trying to explain to him what, you know, he is and how he's the protector and this whole thing. So that's basically how the first episode ended. Um, it's a good show. Like I said, it is subtitled. Um, so if you're not into those kind of shows, you're probably not going to want to watch because it's the entire, it's not like it's part of the show was in uh, Turkish and it's in English and they're going back and forth. It's it's a Turk, all in Turkish. So, but a pretty good show. I'm going to continue to watch. I think it may be six episodes in the season. I'm not really sure off the top of my head. I could be wrong, but pretty good. And yeah, I'm going to end this video here and I will be back with um, the next episode.